Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to pop in real quick. Uh, we've been doing the editing for the video you're about to see. And as I was watching the video, I was realizing, wow, there is so much content on government pensions. One video is nowhere near enough. So there's going to be more. We're just scratching the surface. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, today we're gonna to talk about government pensions. We're gonna get into Canada pension, old age security, and the guaranteed income supplement. Let's go behind the vault. <laughs> Hey everyone, Angelo Mancios here, and today we're gonna to talk about government pensions. So when you get to retirement, what programs are out there that are available to you? What are they gonna look like? And how do they actually break down? So the first one we're gonna talk about is Canada Pension Plan. Also known as CPP. Now, how does CPP work? The way CPP works is, as we earn income in Canada, we actually pay into CPP and our employer matches. So what ends up happening is when you get your paycheck every two weeks or every month or however you're paid, you're going to look at that statement and there's going to be a chunk that comes off that check for Canada pension. And then you're going to get another chunk that you'll see the employer contribution because they're going to match it towards Canada pension. Now, when you turn 60, 65, 70, whenever you retire, you're gonna be able to now start drawing from that pension based on the calculation of how it works. So let's talk about first the Canada Pension Cap. The formal name is the YMPE, but let's not get complicated today, okay? The cap basically means is how much of your income, how much income do you have to earn before you reach the cap threshold? In the year 2020, the maximum is 58,000 700. So if you earn 58,700 gross income this year, you're going to reach the CPP cap, which means you'll have contributed $2,898 towards CPP and your employer will match that $2,898. And that's going to go into the pot. And you know, every Canadian is going to do this as they're earning income. Now, if you're self-employed, you're gonna pay the 2898, which is the employee side, and you're gonna contribute the employer side. So you're gonna do it twice, okay? Once you hit the cap, the next paycheck you get is actually gonna have a zero deduction for Canada Pension because you've already capped out. Now, let's talk about how we figure out how much CPP you're gonna get. In Canada, what they look at is they look at your best 32 years that you worked. So if you were to go onto the CPP website, log in, and we're gonna include the link below for you that you can, you can go do that yourself, you can actually pull up your Canada Pension Report and it will show you all the years that you've worked and how much you've contributed to Canada Pension. Now. For those that exceed the, the CPP cap, or they've capped out, you're gonna see next to a certain year, let's say 2014, you're gonna see an M. M means you've maxed out. If you get 32 Ms, you're going to receive maximum CPP at retirement. We have some clients that have worked more than 32 years and they cap out every single year. And what's really interesting is they'll work, they'll contribute to CPP, but their total won't go up because they've already capped out. So just be aware of how that works. Now, then what they'll do is they'll take a look at how many years you have capped out and they'll, they'll adjust accordingly if you haven't gotten the max of 32 years. There's one caveat to this calculation, and is that if you stayed home with children, so if you took time off, you can take up to five years off um, without it changing how the calculation works. So for example, um, you know, let's say mom or dad stay home for 
five or more years to raise the children while the other spouse works. Their, their calculation is actually going to be the best 27 years, not 32. Okay, so that gets shaved down a little bit for them. Now, how much are you going to receive when it comes to Canada Pension Plan? Well, if you max out and you take Canada Pension at 65, you'll receive $1,175 a month and 83 cents. Now, you do have the option of taking it early at age 60. If you take it at age 60, there is a clawback, and that clawback is 36%. So the amount you're going to get for that is $752.53 a month. If you wait beyond age 65, well, you'll get a bonus. So let's say you take it at age 70, you'll actually get a 42% bonus on your CPP and you'll get $1,669.68 a month. Now here's the magic question. When do I take it? Because it doesn't bump at each spot. So I can't take it at 60 and get 750, and then when age 65 rolls around, they bump me to 1175, and then at age 70, they bump me to almost 1700. No, it doesn't work that way. Your CPP is going to be based on where you take it on this scale. So here's some tips around that. Number one, I'm a big believer in you take it when you Retire. If you retire at 60, take it at 60. If you retire at 64, take it at 64. If you retire at 67, take it at 67. Now with age 70 though, if you're still working, my recommendation is you take it at age 70 because it doesn't get better after that. So if you wait till age 71 or 72, the number won't go up. So you might as well take it at that point, okay? Now, some people will say, well, I'm just gonna wait because I'll get more money. And that's true, you'll get more money, but in the meantime, you'll get zero. So the question really is, the question really is, do I wanna wait and use my own savings to get a little bit more later? What if I don't live long enough, right? So you gotta understand something. These calculations that the government does with respect to CPP isn't about market returns and how much they think they can grow the pot. It has everything to do with mortality tables and mortality statistics. The government knows that one out of four Canadians won't reach the age of 65. My mom's a great example. She passed away 10 days before her 60th birthday. So she paid into CPP for a good 25 years and guess what she got from that? Nothing. Other than the $2,500 death benefit that we all receive That's all she got. And what's interesting is there is a survivor portion when it comes to CPP as well. We'll talk about that in a sec. So if you take it early, then you're not dipping into your own savings. And I'm a big believer in that I'd like to spend the government's money before I spend my own. Because here's the thing, when it comes to Canada Pension, you can't pass that down. You can't give it to your kids, you can't give it to your church, and I use that universally as you know. You can't give it to a charity or an organization. It's just gone, it dies with you. Whereas your own personal savings, you can through a will or a beneficiary, pass it on to whoever you want. So again, I'd rather spend the government's money before I spend my own. Number two, there is a great strategy where what people will do is they'll take CPP at 60 and invest it in their RSP. In the hopes that they can grow that money and outperform how CPP is doing. I will tell you that CPP is mandated to earn about 4% above inflation. So if we guess inflation is about 2.5%, CPP needs to make about 6.5% a year. 
So if you think you can outpace CPP, which you might, okay? Some people, their strategy is I'm gonna take it at 60, I'm gonna throw it in my RSPs, I'm gonna let that money grow, and I feel I can outperform it. We're gonna do another video on this one where we break down the calculations for those of you that really like the technical side. All right, so that's how Canada Pension works. Now, Canada Pension is determined, or the amount that you get is determined based on how many working years you have and what your income is during those working years. The next thing we're gonna talk about is old age security. Now, old age security is a government benefit for all citizens of Canada. It doesn't matter whether you work an hour or 50 years. If you're a resident of Canada for an extended amount of time, you are entitled to old age security pension. Now, old age security, the rule around that goes like this. You need to be in Canada for a minimum of 10 years after the age of 18 to qualify for old age security. And to maximize it, you need to be 40 years in Canada after the age of 18. So my dad, who came to Canada when he was 24, when he retired at 65, had been in Canada 41 years. So he hit the maximum threshold. So at the age 65, he was receiving maximum uh, old age security. My grandmother, she came to Canada when she was 45. So she'd only been here 20 years when she started, when she hit 65. So she only received half of the old age security benefit because she'd only been here 20 years instead of the full 40. So that's how they do the calculation. You have to be in Canada at least 10 years, so you'll qualify for 25%, uh, up to a maximum of 40 years. The benefit for old age security is $613.53 a month, or $7,362 a year. Now, like Canada Pension, you can defer your old age security benefit uh, to age 70. And if you defer it to age 70, they'll give you a bonus again. And that bonus works out to be $834.42 a month or just over $10,000 a year. Again, depending on your situation, if you're working, you're not working, or what your income looks like will depend on Sort of when you take old age security okay most people in canada should be taking it at 65 whether they're working or not again i'd rather spend the government's money before i spend my own now there is a rule around uh, old age security because it's income dependent so while canada pension if you've paid into it you get it and there's no um, restrictions around that there is a restriction around old age security and there is a clawback. So let's talk about how the clawback works. What they'll do for old age security is they'll look at what your income is for the year. And any money you earn net after $79,054, your old age security will be clawed back 15% every dollar over this amount. So it's like a 15% tax on your OAS. If you reach $128,149 of income, you get no old age security. It's completely clawed back. The government feels, hey, if you're making $130,000 of retirement, you probably don't need the extra $7,000 that we're gonna give you. We'll reroute those benefits to somebody who's more in need for that. So keep that in mind. It is taxable just like, old, uh, just like Canada Pension. Uh, both those revenue streams, uh, you're gonna include in the income and you're gonna pay tax on. So that's how old age security works. The last thing we're gonna talk about 
is one that's not that well known, but boy, is it really helpful. It's called the Guaranteed Income Supplement. I think I spelled that right. Let's hope. Yep, I did. Perfect. Okay, so here's how this works. The Guaranteed Income Supplement is really designed for people that don't have a lot of savings, maybe didn't work, and don't have a very high family income. And it's really designed to keep Canadians over the poverty line. So if you're single or widowed or divorced or whatever, if you're single and you're without a partner, whether it be married or common law, and your income is below 18,624, you'll qualify for the guaranteed income supplement. They'll top you up. Okay, now if you are married or in a common law relationship and together the two of you, together the two of you earn $24,576 a year, you'll again qualify for the guaranteed income supplement and they will top you up. Okay. Um, if your income together is 44,640, okay, and your partner does not receive OAS, you're going to qualify for that as well. Lastly, the guaranteed income supplement is tax free. Okay, to wrap up, three types of government pensions that are available. You may not qualify for all three. CPP is work income related. So you pay into it, you receive it. Old age security is based on residency in Canada. And the guaranteed income supplement tops you up if your income is low. So these are three ways the government has designed retirement pensions to help Canadians make sure they keep the lights on, food on the table, heat in their home, and clothes on their back. All right, I hope you got, I hope you got a lot of great information in this one. I know it's really technical. You know, go back, watch it again. If you've got questions, comment below. You've been behind the vault. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and comment down here. Subscribe right there. And here's our next video. See you next time.